All right, guys, here you go. We are nearing the last uh, few days of my 31 days of Midnight Stag that is mostly taking place in August. We are at use number 529, I think, with the Nasset blade. We're putting the blade in the Timeless Razor. It's a stainless steel 68 gap open comb. And for the brush, as always this month, the B35 from Zenith, a large chubby type loft bore brush. And you can see it's so wet, it's dripping. And uh, that's because I just have had it soaking and it holds a lot of water. I am looking forward to trying the slurry lather in a bunch of different scenarios after this month of August here. I have uh, laid down a, uh, a little chart with all the things I wanna do. Mostly it's trying it with different soap bases. I've already tried it with uh, Chella and Sterling, the beef tallow. I've tried it, tried it with Mitchell's wool fat and Williams, and it works great in all of those. It works, it's a very good method for those soaps. So, the Midnight Stag is from Chiseled Face, and it is the scent for the soap and the splash. Here's the splash. The soap is nearing death, uh, relatively speaking. You know, I might be able to get another three weeks use out of that. Some people would look at that and go, that's just a couple more days, because we all just have different usage habits, right? And then the cologne is here for the Midnight Stag as well. Uh, today, I figure let's do kind of a slurry lather, but let's see what happens to the lather if we just kind of relax and we don't hurry with it, uh, but we, we maybe work it on the face a little bit longer than we really need to for what I've generally been doing regarding the slurry lather. Instead of, uh, I call it the slurry because in that first pass, What's on your face is not a complete lather at all. It's not mature. It's pretty young, but it is, it's not just weak. Like if you were to mix up a really, really watery lather in your bowl, you know, and it would just have, it would just maybe need more soap to be added into the mix, but it's been mixed for long enough. It's just weak in terms of the amount of soap per water. It's, that's, that's not what's on your face during pass one of the slurry lather process. Uh, it seems to be more soap than, than you would think, but it's just not combined yet with a lot of the water. It's on your skin, and so it's providing that slickness on your skin, not because it's part of an emulsion yet, but because it's soap on your skin. Then all that water is right up there because of the brush, brushes like this, and it keeps it from being too dry and things like that. That's my theory going forward. We're going to just play with it see what happens. But then what, so what happens then? That first slurry lather pass, it's just super slick. And, but what if I, uh, you know, I stop after just a little while and it still looks very thin, but I shave on it and it's just crazy slick for this soap base. Slicker than if you make a lather out of it, to be honest with you. And what if I just keep working that first pass for longer? Are we going to discover new ground? Is it just going to what be what you expect? The lather comes together sooner? Well, this is austere August, and it's the time to try these kind of things because we're not varying the soap. We're not varying the brush or anything like that. So it's the time to vary our technique since we're not varying our products if we want to learn. All right. Now, some of you guys don't do austere August. You do austere the whole year, right? Because you're, you're, you found a soap that you like. You're happy with it every day. You do your thing. You enjoy your, your shave. Maybe you don't even enjoy it. Maybe you just do it, okay? And you just do it, and the next day you do the same thing, and that makes you happy. Because maybe that's not uh, what you enjoy. What you enjoy most may be your boat and going fishing on the weekend, or going hunting on the weekend, or you know, a, a hobby on your computer, like some kind of uh, gaming thing, or fantasy sports teams, or you know, somewhere else, and maybe where you find your interest. And it may not be in shaving, right? And so your shaving can be mundane and austere the whole year, right? Well, not for me, not for me. So I'm gonna get my face wet, and then we'll keep on going. 
So now the load. Um, I will I will put together a document on my website, sugardaddyshaves.com, that outlines the slurry lather method. And one of the things I feel like belongs on that page, excuse me, is gonna be kind of an introductory guide on how much to load, how long to load. I've got the hiccups. Obviously, if you're picking up a soap that may be like this, that, but it's half full or something like that, and you so you've got a normal uh, surface area of soap to work with, there's uh, maybe 20 seconds might be what you use if that soap hasn't been touched in a long time. But if you've used it for the past three days, for instance, then maybe seven seconds is what you use, or five. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to put together some kind of ballpark figures just to help people have a leg up and, and approximately start right, you know? All right. So since this is definitely re re uh, receiving and uh, retaining some of the wetness from yesterday, we don't have to do a long load. It can be pretty short. Let's try like seven swirls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. Okay. And then I can go straight to my face with it. Uh, maybe by habit, I, I don't know if I actually shook out much of the water. <laughs> I'm just using the tips so as to keep a lot of that water in there. Okay, so now normally I would almost stop right now with a typical slurry lather technique where you are focused on uh, just kind of getting it done, uh, speed, maybe you're short on time. Okay, this is easily extremely slick so that you can shave on it no problem at all because like I said, all that water is around that concentrated thin layer of soap that's on your skin. And then, of course, we, we don't only have the soap on the skin. It's definitely on the brush, too. Okay, but what is different today, I'm going to work this for a little bit longer. Still mainly going to stick to using the tips. It'll probably, you know, start to mature a little bit. This could be good for my skin in the sense of it's getting um, uh, my skin more clean. If I didn't do a face wash before this shave, I may learn nothing from this. But already, uh, look at that lather. That's looking good. Very wet. This could be a way for some of you guys just to start off your normal face lathering routine. is with this kind of wet, wet, wet brush. And so you may take pieces, and there's nothing wrong with that. You watch guys on the internet, or you hear about something, give it a try, and then maybe you want to bring a piece of that technique into your own routine. No harm in that. I knew there was something I was forgetting. I didn't show you the blade yet. And uh, down on this corner is where the uh, little bend was. Maybe about used 225, something like that. Showing you the etch marks on the blade. Maybe you can still see the Sharpie dots right over here on that area there. They might be hanging around. And we can give it a quick wet. And then off we go. You know, if you play around with this method a lot, it could be that this uh, little bit extra time that we gave this first pass, that could be something where we are rewarded uh, in a noticeable way because we are giving the stubble more of a chance to kind of soak in the, the soap and the water, you know, to be more easy to cut. We may find more comfort there. 
We may find more protection for our skin, even more so than the ultra slick lather that I get right away. But the, the skin may be more well protected because of the lather that's able to kind of work its way into the you know, first layers of skin. And there we go, that's the first pass. A little quick water splash. We don't want to, I think one of the big tenets of this method, the slurry lather method, is not to, not to wash away that, uh, if you can, uh, some of the little thin layer of soap that's on your, your skin. So, now we, as we start the second pass, the brush was resting in my lather bowl, and so there was a little bit of water. Oh man, a big old blob there. So yeah, we're definitely dealing with a different lather experience than normally with the slurry lather. This right here is normally what I see on the third pass. And so it's a it's kind of a neat way to experience different levels of yeah, and now we this is a fully mature lather here on uh pass number two. So you can choose, you know, do you want to spend a little bit more time? If you've got more time, because it is a quick method anyway, I'm just at 11, 11 minutes, a little over 11 minutes right now with you guys. And I've just been, I've been wasting time talking, showing you products. You don't do that when you do your normal shaves, I think. So so you could spend a little extra time on your passes. And then your lather will become mature more quickly instead of when I'm doing it fast, it's the third pass. By the time the lather is mature, here it's right here on the second pass. And uh, since I have, I'm not crushed crunched for time today and so I may do a fourth pass just to kind of get a, a higher quality shave. A splash of water. You can do the roll thing where you get the lather that's around the side of the brush. Press your brush into the clod that you've created and so then you circulate the lather through your brush a bit. So we're on the third pass here. And as you can see, we have plenty of lather to do the job for two more passes, even after this one, no problem. Uh, in addition to the different uh, soap bases that I wanna try the slurry lather method with, I, I thought I had tried it with Barrister and Man, and I believe I mentioned that on a few videos. I had not. It was uh, Sterling and the other ones that I mentioned. So I'm gonna be trying it with soap bases, you know, for sure. But I also plan to try it with uh, with a synthetic, if I can find my synthetic. Um, I'm going to try it with some dense badger brushes, like uh, like what? Do we have one nearby? Yeah, here we go. This is a this is an Umo super high density knot Manchurian, and so that'll be interesting. I think it'll be just fine, but you never know until you actually do it, right? I tried it with a standard density three band brush, probably the Whip Dog uh, Silver Tip, maybe. Or maybe it was a High Mountain White. And it worked fine there too. So the razor's moving very well. Where I've shaven already, don't have a whole lot of residual slickness. You can feel that there's something there, but it needs water to kind of activate it. Down here though, you know, where there's lather, very slick, very slick. A good fast kind of slickness too, not something slow. So now that's three passes. 
why don't we do another one? So let me get a little splash of water on my face. So this is the fourth pass. Experiencing the brush a little bit more than I have been recently, so that's cool. Nice big splay. It does have backbone behind the soft tips, but for the for most of the, the shade, you do feel just those kind of soft tips. And of course, the more you paint, the more you do painting strokes like this, then the easier it is for you to live with, deal with, and enjoy a brush with firmer backbone. Okay, when you do these scrubbing motions like this in circles, that's when, when you change direction with your brush, that is when you start to experience the, um, and you start to feel the backbone uh, as, the, as the tips poke into you when you change directions. Now, this is a more dense lather than before. Very slick, but it's more dense. because what we're dealing with here is we're keeping that same amount of water, but we're starting to make all of the soap that was gathered up in that seven swirls. I can't remember how many swirls I did. Uh, it, that gathered up a lot of soap. As you can see, this is fourth pass of lather I've put on. I've got at least two or three more passes of lather in here. I got another pass here around the knot. If I squeeze the knot, that'll take probably one or two passes in the knot, inside the knot itself. And so what we're doing here is we, we are continuing during the shave to combine the soap and the water. And so it's getting richer because technically in this, in this case, we may have started out with a little bit more soap than we really needed. And so we're going to land in a very rich place that might actually be a little too dry. It just depends on when you stop shaving and kind of thing. Cross grain. High comfort here since most of the stubble's gone. I could even start doing. Okay, now this lather you can tell is a little drier. I'm starting to feel the slickness change. It's it's starting to hang on to my razor a little bit. Uh, I, I like to call it kind of a a slow kind of slickness, a little bit of drag. Uh, some people would regard this as normal, but since I kind of seek out those top levels of slickness, I I can tell the difference, and it's a little slower. It can because of that extra drag. If the if a lot of my shave is with this kind of slickness, then I can sometimes tell a little bit of razor burn. I can detect that, feel it coming on. If you know that's coming and you want to avoid it, you can just splash a little bit of water on your brush. Work that in. Yeah, my face definitely feels more itchy and less nourished after that fourth pass because it was a little bit more concentrated. Uh, get a good rinse now. Well, I did kind of a stupid thing. I put my little index card over next to my shave towel. And so when I reached for it with wet hands, I got a couple of drops there that are causing my, uh, the water's causing it to bleed a little bit up here. But I think everything's still easily seen. That's my bad. I should have known that was going to happen. So I'll just uh, set it safely farther away and keep it there in the future. So there we go, five, no, four passes shaved, four passes lathered, the uh, plenty, 
of lather and soap left in the brush. I, if I were to want to keep shaving with this, I just add some more water and it would keep going. I'm going to rinse it now. And here's the brush after a good towel stropping and a little finger spreading just to let air get in there. You can just at this point, because there's no loose water, you can set it on its base to dry. No harm done there. It's not going to dry any faster if you hang it upside down. And we will put on splash. I do appreciate that this is not just an alcohol and menthol type splash. It does have like calendula and witch hazel to help out your skin. Especially at today's shave where that last pass was just a little too dry. I did some research, searched through my database of shaves, and I found out that it was the middle of August last year where I first did my slurry lather and tried it out and called it that name. I have mentioned that throughout this month, thinking that part of the creation of it was rooted in experimentation with when you load with a soap that has lots of a tub that has lots of soap in it, you get some froth overflowing. And I was wondering, hey, when I wipe up that froth and feel it, it's really slick. Could I shave with just that? You know, and, but no, in my initial notes, I didn't mention that when I first called it a slurry lather. I, uh, uh, I mixed it up just to be quick. And so the point was that I, uh, I loaded and then went right to my face, like I have been most of the month. And instead of proceeding on to mature the lather on pass number one, I let that happen at some later time for speed's sake. And then all of a sudden I discovered that slickness that I've been talking about all month. That just, and that just surprised me. Honestly, if that, next level slickness wouldn't have been there, I don't think we'd be where we are now. I've got other guys, other shaving friends that have tried it. People are mentioning it um, because it does actually work very well when you're short on time um, and you want a face lather. Uh, you just have a few minutes. It works really well. And that, that next level slickness was, was what just made me really crazy about it, right? All right. And we will vent the razor, rush some water through it. A little pro tip, if you are rinsing out your razor and you have to put jets of water to clear away your razor, to get the soap and the gunk that's maybe built up in there. If it takes a forceful jet of water to clear that away, your lather's probably too dry. Let's phrase it another way. You could definitely go wetter if you wanted to. You may purposefully like a dry lather, and I'm not talking to you. You just keep doing what you're doing if that's what you enjoy. But if you're searching for slickness, then if you get buildup in there that requires a forceful jet of water to get rid of, Add more water to your lather. There's plenty more room. But if the gravity falling water easily clears your razor away, then that's a good sign that you've, uh, uh, you may be working with a already a, a nice, slick, hydrated, you know, lather. And I think that is it for today. So uh, with the plan of today, it was to just go a little bit extra long on that first uh, pass of, of lathering up. And sure enough, what happened then was at the, uh, I had a nicer lather, more put together lather at the end of pass number one. And at, in pass number two, 
I had the mature lather come together pretty easily. And then three was extra mature. And then four was starting to get to the point where it's too dry. All right. And this is the brush after hair drying. You can see tons of split tips around the edges. There are definitely some in the middle as well. Doesn't seem to be as many. But you kind of would expect that because the outer outer rim is what dries quicker. So I would I would assume that that might have something to do with it. There we go. Hopefully this is helping you guys um, in some different ways as we learn about lather and technique and things like that. And uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.